Oh God. Good morning, good afternoon, um, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode uh, 369. Um, each uh, week uh, we meet here to re review the questions asked on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have uh, Jenny Halaz. Uh, Jenny uh, is CEO of uh, JLH Marketing in the USA. Um, she's based in the Midwest. Is it? Oh no, no, near Raleigh. Is that right, uh, Jenny? Yes, I'm in Raleigh, uh, East Coast. Okay, East Coast of the US. Right, and Micah, you're on the West Coast of the US. Uh huh. In not too far from yep. Silicon. Yeah, Mike here is uh, uh, CEO of um, uh, no, he's head of um, uh, SEO um, for Turn River Capital, and he's also the president uh, of um, a uh, uh, meetup uh, group for SEOs uh, in the Silicon Valley area. No, and not the president of the United States. Sorry, what was that? Not President of the United States. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although we wish he was. <laughs> There's a job that should do with your, your expertise. <laughs> David Razam is a leading internet marketer. He's based in um, West Sussex on the sunny south of the UK. <clears throat> you can find David at uh, davidrazam.com. Tim Kappa is CEO of uh, OnlineOwnership.com. He's also a Google product expert um, in the Google My Business community. He's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Uh, uh, and he's about 100 miles north of Masataki Wasa, who lives in Wimbledon. Uh, Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. And uh, he's also a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. All right, we have um, only two questions tonight. Um, I um, will uh, just bear with me. I've just got to copy that. Um, I just put this in the chat for you, Jenny, because you probably have forgotten where, where our... Um, where our thing is, just bear with me. I'm good, Jim. Go ahead. Oh, you good? Okay, there you are. It's there anyway. Um, all right, so um, our, our first question tonight uh, is it's titled, um, How Should I Go About Finalizing Which Keyword to Use? Um, Look, I won't try and read it all out, but I'll read a little. Uh, um, Rahul uh, Patwa um, asked a question. He said, how should I go about finalising which keyword to use? Uh, he said, I'm creating a landing page to prompt people to use my services for building their e-commerce website. Uh, I have finalised on one of these two as the main keyword. One, build e-commerce website to create an uh, e-commerce website. How should I go about finalizing which one to use as the primary keyword? And I'll be using that in the URL of the page as well. Um, so far, I have checked Google Keyword Planner and Uber Suggest um, for uh, their uh, search volumes. What else should I be doing? I wonder whether these are not specific enough. Um, I imagine that everyone in the world of building e-commerce websites will be putting their efforts into ranking for those. Um, so I, I would be thinking about putting in uh, build WooCommerce e-commerce website or something at the very least. But I think you you need to you need to burrow in deeper than that. I think you need to go more long tail, more specific, um, because these are these are going to be tough. They are, they're going to be tough. So you're 
have a lot of problems ranking for them. And even if you get people coming to your site on those sort of searches, they might be wanting to know how to build an e-commerce website or how to create an, an e-commerce website. They're just not, they're just too, too general. So I think you need to go back and have a think about some key phrases that will really fit what you're trying to do and try and get people to people to come to your site who are ready to buy your your services. Yeah, and on top of that, it, it, <clears throat> outside of um, how competitive they are, when, when you're trying to make a determination of something that you can realistically rank for within a set time period, more or less you're looking for the one that has the most search volume and the one that makes logical sense, that sounds right. Um, so that's usually kind of the way to look at it. And so let's just take the, the two examples you gave. It's like, you know, create or build. Basically, the two ways to look at it is, okay, which one is, which one is, you know, are, are, which one are people actually looking for? And then which sounds the right way to kind of create a page about. And that's usually the way to think about kind of which tar terms to be targeting once you've established that's a reasonable term. Yeah, I mean, I would ask, what, who is your target? Are you trying to target somebody who is just doing e-commerce for the very first time? Or are you trying to target developers who are familiar with e-commerce websites? I think that you'll find a big difference between the intent behind build and create when you look at it from that perspective. Um, I think probably, and this is just my guess, but my guess is that somebody who's just kind of starting out or who is a business owner looking to create an e-commerce website is probably going to be more likely to use the word create, whereas build is more of a developer intended keyword. Um, that you'd have to do some research to confirm that. That's just my guess. Um, but I would think about it from that perspective. And then I'd also think about the fact that your primary keyword is e-commerce website if you're gonna go that general. It doesn't really matter whether it's build or create or pull out of nowhere. It's it's just, um, it, it's, it's the verb intention that goes with the keyword as opposed to being the keyword itself, if that makes sense. Yeah. Any more? We've only got two questions tonight. We, we, we can afford to spend some time on these. All right. Let's um, move on to the next. Um, just bear with me a second. I've got to find the right button to click. Um, this one from uh, Diana um, Lesko. And um, uh, as uh, David Rosem informs me, it's a fairly deep dive into uh, um, some questions about image SEO. Um, she said, I need to get more clear on this. I definitely won't be reading all of this, but um, I'll, I'll just start and you guys ju jump in whenever you want to. Uh, I need to um, get more clear on this. Thus, I posted a very specific question here. So in my theme, there are five things for the images, file name, alternative text, um, title, um, caption, description. Let's see one exa example. Um, file name, sightseeing in a shikara um, in Alapepi, uh, Kerala, India.jpg, alt text sightseeing in a sh sh shikara. Um, and title, um, these are my questions. Oh, guys, uh, all of this can be seen on the uh, on your run list and also in the uh, uh, dumb uh, SEO questions Facebook group. Uh, I'll throw it open to uh, your, your answers uh, to all of these uh, things which are coming up. Um, I'm sure you'd rather be talking than listening to me. 
So your your file name and your title will typically always be the same, and I'm assuming that's if you just if you're using WordPress, it automatically pulls your file name as your as your title. So that's going to be the same. What I would change is your old text because your old text um, is pretty much the what you're using is the title of your article sightseeing in Kerala or Shikala, Kerala, whatever. But that image probably isn't about sightseeing. So I would call it sightseeing in Kerala. I would actually start with what the image is. So let's say your image is a picture of a specific valley or a temple. I would say XYZ temple and then sightseeing in Kerala and then your brand name, right? Because your old text is what is specifically used by screen readers and um, you know that you know under you know that that's that's what should be used because a screen reader is going to say sightseeing in Kerala, which makes no freaking sense because the person who's short sighted should get an understanding of what the actual image is. So it should be, I don't know, X Y Z Valley, and then you can say sightseeing in Kerala, and then your brand name. So you should at least still describe what that image is um, because no image is of sightseeing in Kerala. You should describe what it is. It's a temple, a valley, or whatever. Um, so that's what I would certainly change on that. Um, how many times? You know? I, I wonder. I wonder about how, how much sightseeing in Kerala you, 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 one should be putting into this. Um, yeah. There, there's uh, a lot of images. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think that. I thought it, it was the header image. Context. If this is a blog post with a lot of, we we'll say, 20 photos on it, um, I think I would uh, I, I would drop the sightseeing Kerala from the alt text and just put the the bit that's uh, that's unique that's that's clear and specific to the image. So there's a certain amount of how you're using it here. Um, so yeah, don't don't keep telling the the, the 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 poor person the same thing over and over again. But if you if you've only got a few of them on your page, well sightseeing Kerala will help um, so think about what what's happening on your blog post and and how the page is made up and how uh, how people are reading it um, and you know make, make it interesting you know the the poor person who's needing to use a, a screen reader uh, doesn't want to be bored you know we put images on uh, uh, on a uh, on a um, uh, on a blog post on, on, on a uh, on a web uh, on a web page to liven it up to make it look interesting to involve people. So you know, make your make your uh, alt text as interesting as possible. Totally okay. Yeah. So um, so here's a couple of little free tips for you that works really well in terms of. Touristy, um, tourist, tourist um, stuff, which which I, I use. Um, so if you so sightseeing in Kerala. So I'm assuming that this is, I don't know, you're doing ten things, thirteen things, fourteen things, or whatever. <coughs> so um, you want to number them because you have opportunity then of appearing for a you know for a for a rich snippet if you're number numbering them so it would be your first one would be you'd do like in h2 or h3 or whatever did it at one dot and whatever the valley is that uh this temple number three is this because then you have an opportunity of, of appearing um the another thing that you can do is obviously you're adding an image and like david said if you're adding an image for every single one of these uh yeah don't go overboard with the sightseeing then just label what it is um and then your brand name don't forget your brand name so you know do your brand name but drop out the sightseeing the whole sightseeing bit um 
actually give an embed. You can either do an embed depending on what you've got, or you can actually do a link to the actual uh, location in maps, right? Um, and you can even create yourself a map. Uh, you can even create yourself a list, uh, a new thing. So the maps work pretty well, um, where you can create yourself a map, and at the very bottom of the article, they can actually download the map, which will appear on their phone, and then they can actually follow. So what's worked really well is if we've done temple tours or walking tours in a particular city for any of like my hotel clients and stuff like that, where you start from the hotel or an area in the city, and then you know you create a walking tour, they can actually download it, those maps that you create that you can download onto your phone. <coughs> Another thing we've started supplementing that with also is lists. So um, you can actually create lists now in maps, not just a map, an actual list, which appears, um, and you pull in all the things and you give them a little unique description, um, and that's an actual list that appears to public. And of course, of course, in the introduction of that list in maps, you are going to say, you know, created by XYZ brand, and you can link to the article, right? And this is publicly available in maps. So, um, you know, there's a lot of additional things you can actually be adding to that adds benefits, which builds brand awareness. Um, you know, so the, the map you create is actually indexable. So um, that's indexable. It's another additional way if somebody searches map of a map of Kerala temples, right? Um, that's actually indexable and it may even appear above your article. Um, but of course you've interlinked and people can download it. They can see who wrote it and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then your lists, uh, although they don't appear in search results, they actually appear, uh, when somebody is searching in maps, go in, uh, temples and it'll go and it'll give you a list, but then it'll also say, check out this list you know, in the, in the carousel cards. Um, so, you know, start building up your reputation or your account uh, under your brand name for that also. Wow, those were some excellent tips, Tim. I hope everybody was taking notes on that. I, I know uh, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be watching that back later. Um, <laughs> But I'm going to say um, that there's just there's two things with regard to image SEO that that I want to say more of a caveat than anything else. And that is um, the title attribute, for one thing, is really a link attribute. So it's not a, really appropriate on a, an image that doesn't link anywhere. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, most SEOs use it anyway, and I, th I think it's probably okay to use it anyway, but that would definitely not be a place to spam because that would be using an attribute for something that it's not meant to be used for in the first place and then spamming in addition. Um, and then the other thing is um, here in the States, we have what's called um, 508 compliance. Um, and that is the requirements for accessibility on websites uh, for government websites um, or websites that uh, provide government services like uh, Medicare and that sort of thing. Um, at any rate, they're very strict on what you're allowed to put in the alt text um, and in captions and descriptions because it has to, as uh, Tim was saying, really describe the image as opposed to the point of the, the overall point of the page. So that would be something else that I would just take a look at because I do believe that Google uses that to a certain extent in terms of determining what is and is not acceptable. Absolutely. And I think that tension that exists between image SEO, inverted commas, and accessibility, in that if the image on the page is decorative, then the alt should be empty. That's the web accessibility standards. So if the image is not informative, but merely decorative, 
then there should be no alt text. The question is, you know, what images are informative? Adding information to the content of the page. And what's decorative, which doesn't? That's not, there isn't a sort of a clear line between the two. It, it does depend on the context. Sometimes images are integral in conveying the information on the page in a way that the text surrounding that image cannot accomplish, in which case it is informative and requires an alt text from accessibility point of view as well. But in that instance, then the alt text should be descriptive and brief. And that means you need to try to be concise, because in this example, from the, from the accessibility point of view, if the page describes the houseboat and the image is there purely to decorate, decorate as it were, the page, then that image should not have an alt text. But if, for example, that image conveys some kind of information, which is what would be what would be the right way that has substance. So, say that you know these are the boats that are available, and then this picture shows how it might look being moored, and that may show how it how it can access the boat, for example. Then you would need to able to, you need to be able to describe it. So it's a very difficult one. And I think there's a big tension, as I've mentioned first, between sort of trying to rank an image on search engines and trying to make sure that your website adheres to the principles of accessibility. Yeah, and this is a really big deal right now. These, uh, I don't know if it's happening everywhere, but here in the States, for sure, we've got uh, action groups suing websites for failing to meet accessibility standards. So it is a really important thing to consider from the perspective of your company's liability in these cases. And especially with what this, uh, with what this, uh, person is asking, I mean, I, I see that she's talking about, you know, the difference between a shikara and a houseboat. And I mean, that could potentially be something, especially because it's on water, where if you put something incorrectly, you end up with somebody, you know, accessing it from the wrong point, as Masatake was saying, and and drowning, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's an extreme example, but uh, it, it can be very, very important. And you certainly want to reduce any liability that your company may have uh, for something like that, when accessibility is an important element of your service. Excellent. And in fact, um, You've just got a you've just got another article there for yourself. What's the difference between a uh, I don't even want, not want to go down pronouncing them these the two different things the the houseboat and the not houseboat version. There, there, there's a brilliant article for you already. You know, become the authority. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean. Uh... If you think the Google definition is wrong, I write a better definition and get it ranked for that uh, featured snippet. Cool. All right. Um, let me see. Um, I'm sure that Diane Lesko will be happy with that. Um, when I click this button, yes, it is. Thank you for watching time. We'll be back uh, at the same time um, next week uh, to do this um, all again. But before we go, I must thank uh, Emin Johns, uh, Michael Stricker, Michael Martinez, um, Neil Cheeseman, people who answer questions uh, through the week and uh, um, help um you know domicio questions to, to be such a valuable resource um of course also i must thank uh, jenny halaz um, michael 
Uh, sorry, Masataki Waza, uh, Tim Kappa, and David Rosam, and Michael Nath Micah Fisher Kirshner, I should say. Micah had to leave us early. All right, um, I'll click this button and take us off the air. Um, but if you'd like to come and join us, uh, contact me via uh, um, the um, Damasio Questions Facebook group.